Our scripture lesson this morning uh, comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 28. Listen for God's word for you. And Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the fourth and the, the last week in uh, a sermon series on songs and sermons and songs, scriptures, and sermon. The uh, really kind of got started with the song that we're, we're going to use today, we're using today, and that is, it's been our benediction that we've used off and on for about a year or so. And um, I just, I think there are so many ways that, that uh, music speaks to our life and to our hearts. And uh, those of you who enjoy singing, you obviously know that. If you play an instrument, you make that connection. But uh, even if you just enjoy listening to the radio uh, as you're driving around town or uh, maybe you work in the city and it's a part of your regular commute, um, music has a way of touching our hearts and our lives. And there are songs that uh, we remember from our childhood that we carry throughout our lives. There are songs that uh, we remember. You know, some, sometimes Angie and I will flip on the, one of the old-timey stations. You know, it plays mostly 70s music. That's old-timey for me, I guess. And, um, and so we'll listen to all of the Eagles and all those songs. And, and uh, you know every word of it. And it, there's something that's nice and feels comfortable. And we, we enjoy that. Um, there, are, there are songs, too, that we learn. Um, I suspect songs that you learned in your childhood. Uh, you learned them in church. Uh, songs that were um, maybe children's songs that helped teach you the faith. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. You remember that one? And, and you learned the stories of faith through those songs. Songs that you learned by attending church and sitting beside your parents and learning the songs that were sung and, and heard throughout those years that, that you carry in your heart. Um, one of the things that... Um, you know, I, I know Tina recognizes whenever we've gone over to the nursing home and we would do singing and music and people who uh, could hardly speak to you before the service began that whenever the music begins to play and those familiar songs are played and sung, uh, we'll join right in and know every word that's, that's a part of it. They might not be able to speak to you after the service, but there's something about them that, that we carry so deep uh, in our, our lives. This uh, song, uh, Go in Peace, we've been using in, in worship for a while, it was written by a person named uh, Sam Baker. Uh, Sam Baker uh, was a he is a singer, songwriter. I, I, he grew up in West Texas. I know he lives in Texas somewhere now, but uh, I'm not sure exactly where these days. He uh, was a very active young man. He uh, loved to, to do uh, mountain hiking and whitewater rafting. He worked for a while doing white, uh, leading tours, whitewater rafting, worked in construction as a carpenter, a lot of different jobs, but a physical active life. And whenever he is in his 20s, he played in some bands and sang and wrote music. And uh, if you ask him about the music from that time, he said it was all really bad. It was mostly like, I love you, why don't you love me? You know, I mean, they were just, you know, really kind of sappy, very, not very good songs, you know. But just, you know, growing up and getting over being, you know, teenager and into early life. They were, you know, he, that was what he did. But um, in 1984, he was traveling with some friends, and they'd been mountain climbing down in South America, and they were going uh, in Peru, going to visit uh, Machu Picchu, the, uh, all the, the sites that are there to see. And as they were um, on their way to the, the 
on the trip. We'd gotten on a train. And um, I don't know if you've been on those kind of trains, but they're, uh, you, you sit on this one, you sit kind of facing the people uh, opposite you. So one group is backwards and the other, you know, forward. And so there are four of you kind of knee to knee uh, sitting there together. And as he got on the train, he ended up getting on the train with a, a German family. They were a couple and they had a a young boy who sat down beside him, and after talking to the, the young boy a little bit, um, you know, they kind of got ready for their, their trip. What he didn't know was that directly above them in the train was a bomb that had been placed there um, by a group, a terrorist group. They were called the uh, Shining Path. I mean, that quite a name for a terrorist group, the Shining Path. Um, but they were, they had their political agenda that they were pushing forward. He was apolitical. He didn't know anything about it. And um, it, in fact, it happened to be sitting directly above the couple that was across from him. And um, when it exploded, it killed many people on the, on the train. It um, immediately killed the couple across the way. The young boy who was sitting beside him uh, took hours for him to die, but he died that day. Uh, Sam Baker was, he's immediately um, unconscious. He, you know, he didn't remember what really happened. Um, he, he only learned later that the, about those that had, had passed away. Um, he said that, that he kind of, as he was waking, there was, you know, just kind of in a state, and um, the smoke and an opening in the, the top of the train, waking, you know, for a moment, he, he heard a voice, and he said, uh, he thought maybe he'd had a heart attack or something, um, and, and as he's kind of just coming to consciousness for a moment, the voice he, he heard, it said, you are accompanied by death, and death accompanies those around you. And he knew then that those around him had, had died. Um, he didn't, he said it was more, it wasn't, you know, he, he called it a voice, but he knew it wasn't somebody who was on the train who spoke it or someone who came. It was, he said it was more, it was like a cellular experience that it came through his whole body the way he, he heard it. Um, and he was, had severe damage, um, nearly died, had multiple surgeries, uh, was a, a, a real difficult uh, time for him. He was eventually transported back to the United States, undergo more surgeries. Um, where, the way he was sitting, he, uh, he had his, his hand up holding on to something, and so when the blast occurred, um, shrapnel just ripped his, his hand in two. I mean, throughout his, you know, between his fingers and ripped them in two. That was the least of his worries. Uh, you know, had much more severe damage. His lungs were collapsed. Um, this hand, they just wrapped up because it was not life-threatening, and they treated him, and he said he literally oozed blood for a long time, and they were incredibly generous. People came and donated blood, and he was treated, and... and um, a long, long struggle uh, to get through. Uh, one of the things that he said was that as he was in that, that moment, um, he's, you know, people describe a, a death or near-death experience, and, and he said there was a, it, you could call it a tunnel, but uh, a small light that he saw in darkness and shades of gray all around it, and um, as he, he saw this light, and... Um, and, and what he experienced in that was, was something he called, uh, well, he, he said there was kind of a movement toward that light. And he described it as, a, as a, like a cellular returning uh, to where he had come from. It was like going home. And, um, and, and as that experience was, was taking place, um, he heard the voice one last time that uh, said that you are here for a larger purpose, for something more. And, and in that, he experienced, um, he said, you want to call it God, you can. If you want to call it um, the universe, the embrace of love, um, 
you can. I, I see all that as, as, as the, the handiwork of God. Um, he he um, realized he was going to make it through and that there was a reason why. And so he, um, he continued, you know, through a long struggle, took a long time. Said he, you know, found himself in uh, places where uh, he was, was trying to go through rehab and others were there doing rehab. And, and he realized that many of the people around him were in far more difficult shape than himself. Um, they were struggled to, to get through it all. He, he finally came to the point where he did. But you know, he had lost his hearing. He had brain damage. He couldn't remember, he says, nouns. Uh, just the name for things, you know, like that uh, thing you sit in, a uh, chair, yeah. Um, or he would just have to kind of go through. I don't, I'm, I'm, I find that a little bit myself, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out what something is or, you know, oh, what's that guy who's he's married to Carol and, uh, you know, and, oh, that's Andy, right, you know. I, you have to kind of work through. And he, but he said everything was that way for him. Not just the occasional moment that, that came that way, but everything was. He had to literally work back through uh, learning language. He had always been an active exterior life. Um, and all of a sudden, he said, I had moved from this active exterior life of a young man to the quiet interior life of an old man. And it happened to him very fast. It uh, wasn't something he was used to doing. He didn't spend a lot of time sitting around thinking about what's important. But it, his life became much more spiritual. His life became much more intentional. And he began to write. He just wrote, just wrote and wrote and wrote uh, about the experience. And mostly it was just kind of descriptive at first. And then he began to, to realize it was still pushing deeper. And it began to sound more like poetry. And then he began to hear music to it. One of the things he said is it's hard for him to hear uh, these days because he still has a constant ringing in his ear. Um, he said it's almost like, you know, that end of the, the day when, whenever the television, used to, the television used to go off and it would, you'd hear a beep, you know, beep. He said if you did that and added like three or four other beeps that were all atonal, not in accord, but all doing different things. He said that's kind of what he hears all the time. Uh, some of you may know that experience as well. Um, so he began writing and began doing music again. And he's written a lot of songs about, you know, first they were all about kind of the experience he went through. He, he grew up as the son of a, a church organist. And so music was always around him. In fact, the church music was a big part of what was around him. Uh, he'd spent a lot of time trying to kind of almost get away from it. Um, and now, as a writer, he finds himself returning back to a lot of those uh, songs. In fact, he, he will, in many cases, he'll take a tune, a, a melody from a hymn, and kind of change it a little bit and um, find ways to, to incorporate uh, uh, it into the writing of a new song. And you'll hear that if you ever listen to his music much. If, if you don't mind dealing with sorrow, there's a, there's a beautiful way to hear his music. Um, if you just go onto YouTube, Put, type in the words broken fingers and, um, and Sam Baker. And he'll, there's a beautiful song that he wrote about that experience on the, the train. Uh, he said, you know, it's been 16 years and you know, how could I ever forget this young man? He says, I think, you know, in a sense, I think about this young man who was on this train beside me every day. And, and that some things in life just don't heal completely. Um, and he said, like these broken fingers. He plays guitar backward. You know, he had learned to play the way standard right hand that most people do. But his left hand, he couldn't make the chords on the guitar. But he could hold a pick and strum. So he flipped it over, learned to do the chords with his other hand, and now uses his left hand to play the strings. Um, he's not a great singer. 
he tells a story about one night when he was getting ready to play somewhere, and uh, a lady had wandered in and asked the owner about who was doing music that night, and says, well, he's here, Sam. Sam, do you want to talk to her? And she says, well, are you a good singer? And he says, well, no, I'm, I'm really not. And, uh, do, well, do you play well? And he says, no, I, honestly, I, I'm not a really great player either. And he said, to tell you the truth, my pacing is off. And, you know, and he's very humorous, and he's self-deprecating in his, his way. But he's not a beautiful singer. But in his music and in his own style, there's a brokenness from the experience of life that's whole. And it's about the, the wholeness that, um, that we experience uh, in Christ, in God that uh, God makes our brokenness whole in a way that doesn't diminish the pain or the difficulty we've come through, but it, we find a new wholeness in life. And, uh, and it's represented in the music he writes. If you listen to it, don't go expecting church music. There's a lot of religious themes through there. I mean a lot about grace and mercy and forgiveness and love. Um, but he, his music is not what you're going to hear on K-Love, okay? Uh, so, I mean, it's country music, so, you know, there's, you know, drinking and all, you know, there's this stuff, you know, so know that when you go listen to it. Uh, I don't want to recommend something to you and, and you get the wrong idea. But within all that, there's a deep spirituality. The song that, um, we, that we do, um, Go in Peace, there's a line in it that I know sounds familiar to you. You probably... Um, well, you may have figured out where it came from. Uh, it comes from a song, uh, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And it comes out of the, out of the second verse of that. Um, Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither, to, hither by thy grace I come. Now, that part doesn't sound familiar. And I hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He, to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. That line, um, and I hope by some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home, that's incorporated into the, the song that we do. And that's typical of his music, it, uh, religious language, religious hymns, scripture, uh, woven throughout the, the whole experience. Um, he, he has found that, uh, that there are so many people who connected uh, with his music in spiritual ways that, that he wanted to find a way to send people out uh, from when they were gathered. And, and honestly, if you go hear him in concert and he, he does an hour-long set, he'll probably do about 20 minutes of music and about 40 minutes of talking because uh, he, he loves to talk and tell stories throughout it. But... He wanted to find a way to, 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 to cast blessing upon those who were there. Um, a blessing is a very unusual thing. Um, there's no ought to in a blessing. There's no, uh, you better do this. Um, there's, there's no mandate. It simply goes out and it rests. It rests upon us. Uh, a benediction, a blessing, is something that, that we do that asks nothing in return. It's just something we offer and we give. And God has that kind of blessing for us in our lives. And this song is, is like that. It's like a beatitude. Um, Blessed are those who weep, for one day they shall laugh. It, it, is, it is a blessing that is sent out to rest upon us and to, to let us know that um, there's more to what we experience in life than the difficulty and struggle. It, it's much like Jesus' words, uh, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It, it allows us to shed the burden and difficulty of our struggle in life and just come to him and know that through his love we are made whole again and that we are held up. Um, it's the kind of thing that we can hold to whenever we feel that the world is overwhelming us, 
when we feel that the struggle is too big, whenever we can't make it on our own because we can't make it on our own, it's to know that we don't have to. Um, he's with us all the way. And, and, and you hear this, this benediction, go in peace, and you see the words and you feel it. One of the things that, that, that you know, I, I felt it, and I thought, you know, we should incorporate that into worship somehow. I thought that for a year before I ever introduced it. And finally, we, we did. And, and I've been, it's remarkable the way some of you have responded to me about uh, how much you love that, that song, that it, uh, you connected with it so deeply. And, I, and I'm, I'm so thankful. Um, there's... Uh, even a couple of you said, you know, and you, you did it reluctantly, but I think, and then I, could knew, I knew where you're going, that whenever I pass away, I would like to have that at my funeral. Um, I thought, wow, you know, what if, you know, what if we incorporate that kind of blessing in our lives, knowing that, that God's security rests with us so deeply that... Um, that we're always, in every goodbye, we're always experiencing the larger goodbye. That in every goodbye that we have with each other, we realize that it's like our ultimate goodbye, that our life rests in Christ, so that if we don't see each other tomorrow, um, it's all right. Uh, we go in peace. We go with the peace of Christ in our life and in the fullness of who we are so that, that there's no reason to be anxious and to worry. Uh, isn't that the beauty of the, the Sermon on the Mound when Jesus says, um, you know, consider the lilies of the field? You know, they're more beautiful, I mean, than Solomon in all of his glory, and yet they don't worry. And can any of you by worry add even a single hour to your span of life. Um, next time you get to feeling worried about something, remember those words from Jesus. Remember uh, how he gives us a sense of comfort in knowing that our life rests secure in God. When we have Christ in our life, our life has the most important meaning it can have, and that whatever worries may be out there, they're not of ultimate significance. The thing that's of ultimate significance is already at peace. Go in peace. It's about having that kind of interior presence in our lives. Maybe um, he says that whenever he had that experience of, of approaching the light, he said it was like a great welcoming. It was like a great welcoming. And in his life, he found this purpose, and that he couldn't do anything um, if he didn't write, that it was never a part of his first part of his life. But after that experience, it became everything uh, to be able to write and to share stories and to bring a spiritual quality to, to other people's lives. Um, it's, it's our sending forth. So we're going to sing it once now, then we'll sing it at the close of the service. But um, know that when our life rests secure in him, uh, we, we truly do go in peace. Go in peace. Go in kindness, go in love, go in faith, leave the day, day behind us, day is done, go in grace, let us go into the dark, not afraid, not alone let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home let us hope by some good pleasure 
safely to arrive at home. Amen.